Here we are, Math 20-1, Topic 3.3, the last topic in Chapter 3, Completing the Square. Well, we've learned that we can convert a quadratic equation from standard form back into vertex form by a process called completing the square. Here's what we do. When you take y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, that's a quadratic equation in standard form. We can put it into y equals a times x minus p squared plus q by just rearranging it in this form. For example, let's look at y equals x squared minus 8x plus 5. What we're going to do is we're going to put brackets around the first two and leave the 5 on the outside. We're going to leave room there because now what we're going to do is we're going to learn to complete the square. Now the key step in all of this is you have to look at that middle coefficient, negative 8. You have to take half of negative 8, which is, here we go, take half the middle coefficient and square it. So we're going to take half of negative 8, which is negative 4, and then you're going to take negative 4 and you're going to square it. And that's going to give you positive 16. So now what you're going to do is you're going to finish off that trinomial, x squared minus 8x, by adding 16 onto it. So you're going to add 16 inside the brackets, and you have to understand that we just made up 16 out of thin air. So to keep everything the way it should be, we've got to subtract 16 outside the brackets. And now we can go ahead and simplify it. You look at factoring the x squared minus 8x plus 16. We're going to factor that part. And we're going to simplify the part on the outside. So when you factor x squared minus 8x plus 16, you're going to look at breaking it into two binomials. And that's going to be x times x is x squared two numbers that multiply together to give me positive 16 and add up to negative 8 are going to be minus 4 and minus 4 which is what we're looking for because we want to find the perfect square there because what we're doing is we are putting it into vertex form therefore instead of writing it as y equals x squared minus 8x plus 16 we're writing it as y equals x minus 4 squared and the plus 5 minus 16 simplifies to be minus 11. So what we've done is we've taken it from the standard form of y equals x squared minus 8x plus 5 and changed that equation through this process of completing the square into y equals x minus 4 squared minus 11. Now that's what we're going to do every single time. We're going to take half of that middle coefficient, we're going to square it, and put that inside the brackets and whatever we're adding there we gotta subtract. So let's do another example. This form of the equation allows us to see the vertex and the maximum minimum point without graphing it. Here's another example. f at x equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. And we can say that as y equals we'll put in the equation form so we're going to say y is equal to x squared plus 6x in brackets and leave the last term, the 5, on the outside. Now to complete the square we have to take half the middle term. Half of 6 is 3 and you have to square it. 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to add 9 inside the brackets and I'm going to subtract 9 on the back end of the brackets. So now to complete the square y squared equals y squared plus 6x plus 9 is going to factor into x plus 3 squared and that's going to be minus 4 on the back end. That's it. We're done. Let's look at another one. f at x is equal to 3x squared minus 12x minus 9. Now these are the harder ones that involve an extra step. When you factor this time to get the 3 out front of the x squared so you've got to factor a 3 out of the first term and out of the second term because they're both going inside the brackets. So if I divide 3x squared minus 12x by 3, I'm going to get this. 3 times x squared minus 4x. 
and then minus 9 on the outside. Minus 9 doesn't change because you haven't factored the 3 out of the 9. Now, we do it the same as we did before. We're going to take half of negative 4, we're going to square that, and we're going to get plus 4. So I have to put plus 4 inside the bracket. And now is where I have to be careful because I didn't just add 4 inside the bracket. I added 3 times 4 inside the bracket. Notice the 3 out front? When I made up that 4, I really made up 3 times 4. So now it says minus 9 on the outside. Since I made up 3 times 4, i got to subtract 3 times 4. And to clean this all up now, I'm going to say y is equal to 3 times x minus 2 squared and the last part is negative 9 minus 12 or negative 21. This tells us that our vertex is going to be at 2 negative 21. Also tells me that there's going to be a minimum on this graph of negative 21 because it's going to open upwards because a is positive 3. And it also tells me that there's going to be an axis of symmetry at x equals 2. Let's do some more. In example 2, we have y is equal to 4x squared minus 28x minus 23. The instruction is to put that into vertex form. Again, you're going to keep the 4x squared minus 28x together, and you're going to put the negative 23 on the outside. You're also going to factor 4 out of 4x squared and negative 28x, and that's going to give you 4 times x squared minus 7x minus 23. Now here's where this can kind of get messy. You can use fractions, or you can use decimals when you're working with this. Decimals are probably much easier. So we'll use decimals. We're going to take negative 7 and divide it by 2, the middle term divided by 2, half the middle term, and you're going to get negative 3.5. Now we've got to square that middle term, and we're going to get 12.25. So that means that I'm going to add 12.25 inside of the brackets, minus 23, and now I've got to subtract 4 times 12.25 because I really added 4 times 12.25 because of the 4 in front of the brackets. Now to clean this up, you're going to get y is equal to 4 times x minus 3.5 squared. It's going to be half the middle term squared. And the outside is going to be negative 23 minus 49, which is 4 times x minus 3.5 squared minus 72. What does that tell me? Well, here's the picture now. I can draw it quite simply. If x is going to be at 3.5 and y is going to be at negative 72 and it opens upward, it's going to look something like this. Your assignment for day one is to do page 192, numbers 1 to 6, and on the second day working on this, you're going to be doing page 193, numbers 7 to 17.